Hey everybody, welcome back to my kitchen. Um, so tonight what I wanna do is show you how to make like a chicken and gravy. So remember, not a professional here, not a chef, but I wanna show you how to modify some of the things that you might like to make them a little bit healthier for you. So what I have already done here is I have fried the chicken. So I've quartered the chicken up or cut taken the chicken breast and cut them in half, um, put some olive oil in the pan, seasoned them with salt and pepper, and um, fry them in the olive oil until they are crispy. So you can see here, it's nice and golden brown, cooked all the way through. So I find that if you take the chicken breast and you cut it in half, it doesn't get quite so dry when you're making it. And because sometimes chicken can tend to dry out. So one of the other things that you can do to keep your chicken kind of moist while that it's cooking is that cutting it in half, cut it at a really low heat, you know, maybe like a two or a three on your oven setting um, so that it can just kind of cook real slow. Because if it gets charred on the outside, then um, you tend to think that it's done, but it's not quite cooked on the inside. So if you cook it a little bit slower, then it's gonna not be dry. So I still have the olive oil here in the pan, and I hope you can see this good enough, but I still have a little, the olive oil and the, the drippings from the chicken. And I'm gonna take some chicken broth, and I'm gonna pour it in here. Yeah, don't panic, you're gonna see it make some steam. We're gonna make gravy. So I know that, first of all, uh, we're here in West Virginia, so we like our gravy. Uh, we like our home cooking kind of stuff. And when you start to eat um, healthier and get on a different kind of meal plan, you start to think that, you know, you can't have things like that or, you know, you can't have things that are tasty. And then if, say, you are trying to get on a healthy kick and somebody maybe in your family isn't at all on board because they like this kind of stuff, here's a way that you can modify it to make it good for everyone all around and still feel like you're getting some flavor. So, like I said, I've done the chicken breast. I rolled it actually in almond flour instead of in like a regular white flour. So the almond flour is no different in the taste. It still gives you that nice golden brown consistency, you know, coating on the outside. Again, salt, pepper. If you want to use a little Italian seasoning or, you know, some basil or oregano, whichever, you know, whatever you like, you can make it suited to your taste. Um, but this is just a very bare basics, you know, salt and pepper. And then, like I said, I pour, you know, this um, chicken broth in here. Um, about a cup two cups depending on how much gravy you want what else you might be having with this and um i'm going to show you how to like I said, make the gravy so the chicken broth you want to get it to where it's simmering and i have this set on a five so about a medium heat is what you want for this because you want your broth to get nice and hot you want it to get a little bit bubbly um on there because for the gravy so while that's getting heated and that's getting bubbly so i'm going to use arrowroot um arrowroot is much healthier for you than a cornstarch or a flour. And if you've never made gravy before, let me tell you, this is the easiest thing you could ever think of. Um, I, we, as you probably know, am plant-based. Um, so I use vegetable broth if I'm gonna do something like this and make gravy out of it and, and make, you know, I've made vegetable pot pies. You can do this to make a chicken pot pie. Uh, put like some chickpeas that have been ground up on top of it. It's a crust and that's another recipe we'll do, another recording we'll do another day. Um, but this is just your bare bones, basic, quick meal that you want to fix. So the arrowroot, um, what it does is it, it will give you that, that consistency that you need that's like a gravy, um, and it's not quite as processed. So I get a little bit here, uh, you know, about one to two tablespoons, put that in my dish, and then I'm going to take my fork and I'm going to... Put some, I'm gonna put some water in here. You can use chicken broth if you want to, or the vegetable broth, whatever you use, and I do have the water here. And so as you do, you wanna pour the water in slow and just kinda of keep stirring. That's why you go real slow with the water, because you don't want it too thick, you don't want it too thin. You just want enough that kinda of makes it um, a little bit watery. And put the so you can see how that is. All right, see that down the bottom there? So what happens is this is a thickener and this is going to help this chicken broth, which you can see is kind of really bubbly right now. This is gonna make this into our gravy. Uh, you wanna take a whisk. Um, this is a whisk that has uh, like a rubber on it, so it's not gonna scratch your pans up. And I was just kind of like, this is just my thing, but I just start kind of swirling it before I even put in the, the thickener. 
And again, you've got it on the four to five range with that. And you wanna pour this in slow. And so you're just kind of drizzling this in and you just keep stirring. You just keep stirring the whole time. Pour all of that in there, keep stirring. And as you stir, it's gonna keep getting thicker. And this is where you go to the desired thickness of it. I've made quite a few gravies in my day. So, um, I'm pretty good at this measuring out and figuring out what to use, but everybody likes a different consistency. You might want it really thick, you might want it really thin. So we're gonna be pouring this over top of these chicken breasts so that they're, you know, it feels like you're still having the gravy. They're a little bit moister. Um, there's a little something to rub it around in and eat it. Uh, did I mention that I'm from West Virginia? <laughs> um, I'm one of the queens of comfort foods until I went on to this health business. Um, and so now I've learned how to modify some of those things that we like here um, in this region to where they're a little bit healthier and you can still eat them and not feel like you're being deprived. And so this is one of those things. So once you get to where it's as thick as you want it, um, and you can turn it down all the way down to low, and then you just keep it simmering. You don't need to simmer for too long because the thing with arrowroot is once, or you know, if you were to use cornstarch, uh, but I like I said, I like the arrowroot better. Um, once you've got it to that desired consistency, it's not gonna continue to thicken up too much. If you were to use flour, um, it'll keep getting thick and you have to keep adding stuff to it, but arrowroot doesn't tend to do that. But if you, you know, you mix all that in and you're like, oh gosh, it's too thick, what do I do? Then you just take and you pour a little bit more of the chicken broth in or vegetable broth, whatever kind you're using until it gets to where you want it. And now what I do with this is I take my chicken breasts and I put them back down into here um, so that they can suck up some of that gravy. And you don't have to do that. I mean, if, if you don't want to like simmer it in there for a little while, you don't have to, but I will until, I, you know, like um, I want everything to be hot when I serve it. So what I'm going to do is, you know, put that in there, cover it up with a lid, you know, simmer it down on the very, very lowest setting or even just on the warm setting. And, and keep that like that until, you know, I have all my other side dishes ready. So what I would do with this is maybe make some asparagus, you know, steam some asparagus and go alongside of that. Um, and whatever kind of vegetable that you like. But if you've never made gravy before, give this a try. It's really easy, as you can tell, and it doesn't take hardly any time at all. Season it with, like I said, the salt or pepper, whatever seasonings that you like, and you are good to go. Y'all have a great night. Thanks.